among the dioxygen properties. Its liquefaction temperature is 90 Kelvin and it freezes at 55 Kelvin, is melting point. There do exist three stable isotopes. Among these, oxygen 16 and oxygen 18 are the most abundant of the isotopes do exist in nature. Molecule oxygen is paramagnetic in its magnetic properties. The reason for this is presence of two unpaired electrons in molecular orbital diagram of oxygen. Electrolysis of water provides us splitting of it water into hydrogen which is collected at cathode next to which are terminal and oxygen at anode first to which are terminal and this electrolysis is one of the major supply of oxygen in submarines in space tissue Oxides of group 16 elements. Simple oxides can be classified on the basis of their acidic, amphoteric, or basic character. Simple rule is as you move along a period from alkali metals to a halogen, the basic character reduces and acidic character increases in going from sodium or potassium and or sodium magnesium to down the series to sulfur we saw acidic character increases for example calcium oxide makes a basic calcium hydroxide which is alkaline similarly sodium oxide calcium oxide barium oxide they all make alkaline aqueous solutions sulfur its aqua solution will be acidic like here we see sulfurous acid the reason for this is electron activity increases along the period so there are better acceptors of electrons or act as Lewis acids as we move, go along the period Some metallic oxides exhibit both acidic as well as basic oxides like aluminium oxides. They are known as amphoteric. While going from basic to acidic oxides, in the middle, in a period, we will get intermediate amphoteric oxide like aluminium. Alumina when dissolved in HCl, we will see aluminium complex with water when dissolved in sodium hydroxide we again we get a aluminium complex with hydroxyl ions so it exhibited both acidic as well as basic behaviors another important group 16 compound is ozone ozone we can say is an aerotropic form of oxygen it is naturally formed at about 20 km above the surface in an atmospheric layer known as mesosphere. This ozone layer is responsible for protecting life from dangerous ultraviolet light coming from sun. It is naturally formed by reaction of oxygen with ultraviolet. So it's actually a filter is formed. How it is formed? We can prepare this through passing oxygen through electric discharge. 
when we pass electric discharge what happens we saw oxygen splits up making nascent oxygen atoms that combine with other oxygen molecule to make our ozone because of its reactivity it does is not stable and it decomposes in a on surface naturally thermodynamically it is unstable because with the ease with which it liberates nascent oxygen atom so ozone is a strong oxidizing agent one important concern depletion of ozone and why it's depleting we know air travel is a part of our life today but the jet planes their engines exhaust having lot of nitric oxides nitrogen oxides this nitric oxide what happens which coming from the exhaust of a plane it combines with ozone to make a nitrogen dioxide and natural oxygen and this depletion process keep on going and because of the reduction in the concentration of ozone protection of earth from ultraviolet reduces another reason for these are freons freons are chlorofluorocarbons like cfcl3 their formula is named as a freon 11 technique used number of carbons present minus 1 number of hydrogen present plus 1 and fluorine fluoro atom here no hydrogen so 0 plus 1 only one carbon 1 minus 1 and one fluoro so freon 00011 freon 11 going to the next we have no two fluoride two fluoro atoms no hydrogen 0 plus 1 carbon 1 only 1 minus 1 so 012 that's 12 Going to the next C two F two Cl four two minus one zero plus one one fluorine two two fluorine one one twelve is a chemical formula or chemical name for this fluorine. Similarly, C two F three Cl four F three is three carbon two minus one zero plus one so it will be one one three fluorine one one three. but this chlorofluorocarbons are responsible for depletion of ozone layer that's why they are banned sulfur yellow sulfur which is known also known as alpha sulfur monoclinic sulfur beta sulfur are the most important allotropic forms of sulfur and they having a transition point mean they keep on converting into one another at 369 kelvin the temperature at which both these equilibrium point to exist for these allotropic forms is known as transition point also eight atoms sulfur chrome and known as the rhombic sulfur this eight atom sulfur is converted into a monoclinic sulfur at 369 kelvin temperature or 96 kelvin net steel system temperature at room temperature rhombic sulfur alpha sulfur chrome sort of structure will be more stable monoclinic sulfur will be stable at high temperatures among the sulfur compound sulfur dioxide which is a colorless gas 
having conjunct smell and got high solubility in water. It can be liquefied at a room temperature with hardly two atmospheric pressure. That is the reason sulfur dioxide is stored in liquefied form in steel containers. Industrially, it is a byproduct which we will get after roasting the sulphide ores like galena, lead sulphide, zinc sulphide or copper sulphide ores. Iron sulphide, when we roast it, we are getting a ferric oxide and sulphur dioxide which is a byproduct. Under lab conditions, Sodium sulfide and its reaction with sulfuric acid is used for the preparation of sulfur dioxide. Sulfide reacts with uh, acid to give us sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide injection with water and alkalis is similar to that of carbon dioxide like carbon dioxide dissolves in water to give us a carbonic acid sulfur dioxide dissolves in water to give us a you know sulfurous acid which is in equilibrium with water as it is acidic in nature it reacts with the alkali to give us a sodium sulfide sodium sulfide further Reaction with sulfur dioxide gives us a sodium hydrogen sulfide. Further, if we heat sulfur dioxide in ample supply of oxygen under catalytic condition, vanadium catalyst will use V2O5, we get sulfur trioxide. This is also used for the preparation of sulfuric acid. We know sulfur dioxide reacts with chlorine gas with charcoal presence to give us sulfuryl chloride. If you remember, sulfuryl chloride is used for preparing phosphorus pentachloride and sulfur dioxide is act as a reducing agent which converts ferric to ferrous and itself undergoes oxidation to give us a sulfate If we pass sulfur dioxide through a production permanganate, it decolorizes mean, it reduces the permanganate to manganese ions and itself undergo oxidation to give us a sulfate. Manganese 2 positive from manganese 7 positive, it goes reduced and sulfur got oxidized. Now, oxo acids of sulfur. First, sulfurous acid. It having the two oxygen, three oxygen atoms. Two exist as the hydroxyl groups. One a double bonded oxygen and one lone pair. So, oxidation state of this will be plus four. For sulfuric acid, H2SO4, two double bonded oxygens. Minus 2, minus 2, minus 1, minus 1, plus 6 is oxidation state for sulfuric acid. Maximum possible oxidation state for sulfur. Going to the next peroxidized sulfuric acid, which happens we having a hydrogen atom removed and two oxygen exist as a peroxo group. 
so it is having oxidation state of minus 1 min minus 2 minus 2 minus 1 plus 6 again in pyrosulfuric acid what happens we having the H2SO4 two units combined with each other losing a water molecule and co1 oxygen common again oxidation state will be plus 6 it's also known as the olive What happens to molecules combined using as a pyrosulfuric acid or oleum? Sulfuric acid, hot concentrated sulfuric acid is a moderately strong oxidizing agent, intermediate between phosphoric and nitric acid. What we see is a phosphoric acid. This is sulfuric acid, nitric acid. Nitric acid is most oxidizing. After that, it's sulfuric acid followed by phosphoric acid. H3PO4. Concentrated sulfuric acid is also a very strong dehydrating agent means it removes water from the organic matter. If we take a sugar and add sulfuric acid into it, it removes all the water and only leaves behind charcoal, which is carbon. You see here, after addition of a acid in sugar, that's what we will get. Industrially, Sulfuric acid is prepared using contact process. First step will be getting a sulfur dioxide either by burning sulfur or by roasting an ore. Sulfur dioxide will be a byproduct of it. So we are getting sulfur dioxide. In next step, that sulfur dioxide is converted into sulfur trioxide using ample supply of oxygen and vanadium catalyst. It's an exothermic process. In third step, sulfur trioxide produced is absorbed on sulfuric acid to give us a oil, which is a, if you remember, pyrosulfuric acid, H2H2O7. This is what happens in a chemical reactor. After getting the sulfur dioxide, after burning it, we pass it through dust precipitator to remove all the impurities and it you know, washed. After that, concentrated H2SO4 is spread over it. That's what we will get. Then after washing it, we have the dry SO2 and oxygen, which is passed through. We are heating it and then pass it through column with vanadium, getting the sulfur trioxide. Sulfur trioxide again, washed with concentrated H2SO4 again to give us oil. Finally, this oil is used to produce sulfuric acid of desired concentration. In H2SO4, the first dissociation constant is extremely high, but second dissociation constant will be low. So overall constant if we will see we get it by multiplication of Ka1 and Ka2.